Coroutines are great for asynchronous work like downloading multiple images at the same time, but I've discovered that it's much easier to understand coroutines when we start with just regular old synchronous code that runs one line at a time. And in fact, when we want to use coroutines for synchronous work, we can usually get by without depending on the kotlinx.coroutines library at all. We can just depend only on the standard library. So for today, we're going to set aside asynchronous programming, and that's going to help us see more clearly what a coroutine actually is. Now, what makes a coroutine different from any other routine or subroutine, like a regular function, for example, is its ability to pause its execution and preserve its state. And then later, it can pick up where it left off. And in order to demonstrate a coroutine's ability to pause and resume, I've got some code that alternates between feeding a dog and feeding a cat. Now, this code is very straightforward. We just alternate between dogs and cats feeding one at a time. And when we run this, you'll see exactly what we expect to see. Each of these lines is printed out. But a lot of times we want to separate our concerns in our code. And this is uh, the way this is currently written. If we want to alternate between dogs and cats, we have to mix the code for feeding dogs with the code for feeding cats. And as we're about to see, coroutines will allow us to separate these concerns while still allowing us to continue alternating between the cats and the dogs. Now here's a coroutine version of the same code where I created one coroutine for feeding dogs and another coroutine for feeding cats. And we pause the coroutine after each feeding and the code up here simply resumes each of those coroutines in turn. And when we run this, we get the same output that we had before where uh, we alternate between feeding dogs and feeding cats. However, you can see we've organized our code so that all of the dogs are in one block of code and all of the cats are in another. So with coroutines, we've managed to separate our dog concerns from our cat concerns, but while still alternating between them when we feed them. And when we call the pause function here, that coroutine pauses, and then when the main function calls resume, that coroutine picks up where it left off. And the result is that the execution alternates, first feeding Boots, and then Fluffy, and then Danny, and then Socks, and so on. And there are a few important things to note about this code. And the first thing is that we're not doing anything asynchronous here. So this code is still executing just one line at a time in a predictable order. And the execution path is simply bouncing back and forth between our two coroutines. And second is that we're not using the kotlinx.coroutines library at all. If I open up the imports here, you can see all of the imports that we have are from the standard library, just kotlin.coroutines instead of kotlinx.coroutines. And the third is that I created a few functions to uh, make this easy to read, like the pause function, uh, the resume function, and the create coroutine function. And within those, I'll let you see what I'm doing here. Um, I really just, I'm using a couple of the low level APIs uh, that we don't typically use in our own code, but still it's really just a few lines of code. And I wrote this code just to demonstrate the essence of a coroutine, which is its ability to pause and resume. And there are a lot of assumptions I built into this code in order to keep it lean for this example. So don't go using coroutines in your production code this way. Uh, the big takeaway is that coroutines allow us to separate our dogs from our cats while we can still alternate between them as we're feeding them. And besides remembering where the coroutine was when it was paused, a coroutine also remembers its state. So for example, we can change these coroutines so that they loop over a list of dogs and cats. So this version of the code does the same thing as what we just saw, but in this case, we're using for loops for the dogs and cats. And when we run this, we'll still get the same output as we had last time. And the important thing is uh, to notice here is the state of the for loop is preserved when pausing and resuming. So again, the key characteristic of a coroutine is its ability to pause and resume. Uh, we can use them to separate our concerns, again, like the dogs and the cats, while still interleaving their instructions like the uh, print lines that we're doing here. And as I showed before, uh, we've got a few custom functions that we call through to the low level coroutines API in the standard library just to demonstrate uh, synchronous coroutines, but you don't need to do that in order to benefit from them. The standard library includes a few functions that you can use right out of the box, such as the sequence function. 
Here's a simple example of how you can use the sequence function to get all of the weekdays between two dates. And this block of code contains our coroutine code, and it's really just a while loop that iterates over the dates. However, it does skip the weekend dates. Now, the call to this yield function here is what pauses this coroutine, and when the for loop iterates to the next item, the coroutine is resumed. The coroutine is paused and resumed, bouncing back and forth between the coroutine code and this for loop, uh, much like alternating between the dogs and cats in our previous code, and it does that until we've traversed over all of the dates. So again, we can benefit from coroutines without using the kotlinx.coroutines library and without doing any asynchronous work. Now for bonus points, if you want to try out one more standard library function that uses synchronous coroutines, take a look at a class named deep recursive function. You can use it to traverse a large binary tree, for example, without getting a stack overflow. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I've got another video coming soon where I'll show off a few debugging tools to make your life easier when working with coroutines. I'll see you then.